Good day, everyone. Welcome back to today's video on the Obstacle Racing Media channel. And yes, as the thumbnail said, we're going to talk about barbed wire. But before we do, we have an amazing deal, one we've never had before. It's just been launched. 30% off, 30% off every Spartan race you want to go to. Sprint, Beast, Super, Ultra Beast, Stadion, 30% off, ORM 2023. Also, Tough Mudder, any Tough Mudder, tell a friend that's 5K, 10K, 15K, Infinity. Doesn't work for World's Toughest, doesn't work for Toughest, works for all the others. ORM 2023, great discount. Now let's get into the show. Lots of talk about the barbed wire. If you haven't seen it, uh, short version is uh, the elites for the 3K do uh, two 1K laps and then a third uh, round of three laps, five laps. Backs got scratched up because they went through the barbed wire a lot and people are complaining. We just recorded a weekly show with my friend Matt Kemp, who is a regular guy like you and me, just a regular racer out there, regular and or age group guy. And then also a brand new racer named Jake Martinez, who did his first 3K race, uh, but has been following the sport for a long time. And if you listen to the entire interview, which will eventually be up on podcast and possibly here on YouTube, you learn all about him. But I thought he had some great insight uh, as a guy doing his first real competitive races, but a guy who's been following the sport. He's a Division One runner. Um, so let's get into it. Won't dilly dally anymore. Away we go. I want to get barbed wire out of the way. I'm going to give my big thoughts on it, and then I'll let you guys talk. Oh, boy. There are there are things I've seen over the years that I would consider unsafe, right? Like, mm, that's, that's a sketchy swim. Or the fact that we get in things like, you know, disgusting dunk water or things that could give us diseases. I've never thought barbed wire was dangerous. I've never, like, I've done hundreds of races, and... While I've never gone the speed of the elites, I ha I used to compete and actually go, and I've never had a problem, right? Now, again, I don't go at their speed, and I haven't raced competitively in a long time, but I do not think barbed wire is inherently dangerous. So if you don't want to get cut up, put a shirt on. Now, if you say, well, that's going to slow me down, or whatever, it's like, okay, I, I don't think barbed wire is a problem. If you don't make it barbed, people are going to fucking cheat and put their backs against it, probably, and maybe even cheat. And, and over here, we've got everybody complaining that Spartan needs to go back to its roots and, and lasers are dumb. And, and it's like, here's a thing that's legitimately hard and you need to race really low. This race, there were actually deep holes that you could be far below. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, I'm sure I'm going to get hate from elites. Like, you have no idea. You've never gone that fast, blah, blah, blah. But I don't see barbed wire as a problem. And this is a weird take to me that all of a sudden, we used to brag about it. We called them Spartan kisses. And here's my war wounds. Like, people would come back from a race and go, oh, my God. And now it's like, oh, my God, Spartan. How dare you? So I don't know what the fuck's happening uh, with this weird take that people are having. What do you think, Ken? I would say I think racing yesterday so i didn't see that much of it in the age group and open didn't see and that. age groups are going no. fast yeah like they're going i mean i particularly wasn't going as fast as i would like but um but i think overall it was uh i didn't i didn't feel like i saw too many people like anyone's back like torn up there and i and i get it like the difference is the elites have to go through it five times right like if you're making through you're going through it five times and you're going through it faster than any of us are going through it once um i i don't think it's inherently that bad um i think it's more of a like i don't think it's like i wouldn't say it's particularly unsafe either i kind of i'm on that side too i saw some posts on social media this morning when i, I was like i was like I'm, i was like okay i kind of was surprised that this was the take um i think it was a little like eye-opening i mean that was the first thing i sent you a picture of there <laughs> i was like look at these guys backs you know um i was like but, but i still uh, didn't think oh this is bad i just thought wow that's that's what happens when you're fucking going for it Exactly. And I think that's part of it. It's like, if you take it away, like you said, the, the elites, as the discussion always goes, is like, they're going to find the line of what's legal and what's not. So if you take the barbed wire out of it, and, or with the barbed wire in it, even, you could say, 
this is their choice to push it this way, right? You, you can you can get through without touching the barbed wire ever if you wanted to, right? But then you're going to go slower. So that's where you want to be competitively, right? I don't, and I think that's the whole point of it, right? Like the whole point of the barbed wire is that it's supposed to slow you down, right? It's not supposed to be something that is, you know, a cakewalk. It's supposed to slow you down. And if you want to avoid it every bit of wire, you can. Um, and I mean, I feel like if you looked at, like, I don't really remember the woman's field back being that torn up compared to like, it seems like there's a handful of men and more so. Um, so yeah, like maybe your point is saying, like, if you want to wear the shirt, like I think Atkins wore a shirt the first round or two and I don't, his back wasn't nearly as bad as the other guys. Um, you can definitely make it avoidable, but yeah, I don't think it was considered like so unsafe or, or whatnot. I think it actually, how you said like, for me, I think it was a great balance of bringing back what people want to see in Spartan, right? Like, like, Hey, we want to see this gnarly something or other. Right. And it's like, we haven't had a 200 yard, 300 yard barbed wire crawl in years or when we did it, especially at Palmerton in the past, it used to be on the same hill and it was just like this fluffy grass that you're kind of rolling through. Right. So it's like, yeah, you have to stay low and you can still get caught on it. But it, but this time it was like, I was like, this is not like you're getting three, four feet deep into a hole to have to squeeze throughout it. Like I thought it was much more exciting and more, you know, new than anything else that we've seen or that I've ever seen with a barbed wire crawl. And I was like, yeah, like, why not? And especially, I think today they posted like it poured overnight, like it's pouring here now and all those holes, it was filled with water, you know, and mud. So it's like, that's gonna be a fun race today for those people. Like, I think it's, you know, it's a fun way of, you know, letting nature kind of get involved too. And it's, it's I don't know, just, I think it was a good, a good twist on the obstacle um, as opposed to it just being like, you know, you can't roll through it, you know, <laughs> you had to really think about it, really move around and like shift back and forth. I, I, I thought it was a, I thought it was a really good obstacle. Um, obviously I understand people concerned about like, blood but you know it's um i don't know i i didn't think it was i don't think it's i think it may be just an elite only issue and it doesn't seem like most of the elites i don't think all of them care that much <laughs> um, right. your thought jake is a that competitor that and a fan of the sport for 10 years it was it was a game changer like of all the obstacles in the entire race like that was the single one that actually gaps were put on people they're like moving the weight back down 90 pounds all those elites could get them up run through it pretty quick well, almost everyone oh yeah, almost yeah not not me <laughs> <laughs> everyone but me um could really you know the competitors you know they could do it very easily all the other obstacles were the standard ones like that was the one unique different different differentiator that like i think uh kempson uh he put 20 seconds on atkins uh on the in the final round that first one like it was a 10 second gap going into the barbed wire and when he came out it was 30 sec it was uh, a 30 second gap so like that was a game changer and like if you went downhill I'm like yeah maybe that'd be a little dangerous but going up like you just had to just be really comfortable with getting really low and schlepping up and down it, it sucked it really sucked but never was i once like wow i shouldn't be under here this is like i'm like sketched out like it but that was the one differentiator in the entire course everything else was very gaps remained stagnant that was the one thing that people really stretched the rope on um and yeah. yeah i think like i said if you take it away and you just put like strings well now it looks like terrain race or bubble run or it just it just doesn't and i was thinking as you guys were talking it's like well, what could we do instead look what's another good low crawl well there's like you could put logs like they do in the military right but then people be like oh man i came up too soon it scratched the fuck out of my back you know what i mean so let, let's move yeah. on. I want to get to some of these notes that you that you wrote, Jake. Um, and then we'll we'll kind of get your thoughts and get Matt's thoughts as well. Um, uh, okay. Uh, you wrote, uh, I wrote, would you do it? You wrote me, you wrote, you wrote about your, your, how the course went for you about your, your, the, the sandbags and whatever. And uh, let's just go ahead and blame Steve. Steve, God damn it, you screwed us up. Um, and I said, would you do it again? And you said, if I came in with the right training for myself personally, I would probably give it another crack. But from being a fan of the, fan of the sport for many years, I understood the frustration of both the athlete and the fan. On one side, regulation and standardization events help it become legitimized. You guys know what I mean? Legitimatized. Come on, man. Sorry. Oh, my goodness. This is what you have to look forward to getting older, uh, Jake. Yeah. 
You have to like zoom, zoom in, scroll out. Uh, standardize events, help it become legitimized. And if they want to get to that global level, that's likely the process they need to go. However, okay, this one's a doozy, but I like it. If they're going to stick with the short course style, they need to make it harder, says the new guy. If I focused on grip strength for the next year, I could get through every obstacle with ease. The fact that the pros can rip through this thing with no fear of failing is disappointing. As a fan, you want there to be tension and a buildup on if they're going to be able to make it through. Go ahead and standardize this, but have special elite only obstacles that they're actually going to challenge the top of the sport. Something we've all been saying for years, have, have different weights, different things for elites. The regular Spartan races can stay the same, but there needs to be an advanced version of their obstacles to create intrigue and also raise the pros on a platform. They earned that position, and now they must be tested in all fitness areas over the course of this short race. Let's cover that before we get this get to the Friday race. So that's about as well as anybody could say it from a guy who, like, this was his first race. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm I was a marketing major. Like, that's my gives me my profession. That's what I'm very passionate about. I'm very passionate about storytelling and making product, selling product. And that's why I'm going to school. I think there's something really neat about creating something, bringing it to market and selling it. And this is exactly what Spartan is trying to do with this new format from a purely business perspective. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to create this, you know, create viewership, create uh, excitement. That's going to eventually turn into more people coming out to these events, watching these events. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, when I was watching, I got out after the first round. And I'm watching the 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 finals, the the the, the sorry, the semifinals and the finals. When they cruise through, I'm like, there was no question mark that Atkins or Lindsay or any of them were gonna fall off that rig. Because that's what they do. They're fit and they're strong. Maybe by the third bad. round, maybe by third the third round. round with the women, maybe. If it's wet, it's always harder. Maybe, yes. Like I said, there was, I would say 10% of that finals field failed the rig you know i'd say 10 percent on that last round like it was very like i saw one or two guys maybe one woman one or two women I mean, ryland fell off and ryland's a world-class athlete yeah very fit so like i said by a third round maybe um but for that the top of the pack the guys that were coming through um leading there was zero uh fear that they're going to fall so i'm like okay it's impressive to watch them with such ease it shows their expertise their strength their ability there's nothing to discount how impressive because what they're doing like what they're doing is not easy i'm not trying to say what they're doing is easy but we need i think there needs to be a raising of the level of expectation asked of them in these grip-based obstacles that's going to be like man like when i'm watching this like is he gonna make it across like think back to tahoe whatever year that was where they had the however many long meter long rig. And then it was uh, Faye Stenning and Lindsay burping it out at the end. Like that was epic at the end because there was that genuine intrigue. Like, wow, is she going to make it across? Is he, is she going to make it hit the bell and win it? Or they're going to be burping. Out? Like that was exciting. So it, was, it wasn't normal. It wasn't the standard and it was exciting. So as a fan, and once again, the people who are watching this is like kind of an aside, but I think this is relevant. The people who are watching these, streams and are tuning in and coming to a race day are the hardcore fan they're the small core consumer that is already very invested in the sport they're going to tune in on a 4 p.m on a friday they're these people who are fans invested already but if we're trying to truly grow the sport to a global level we need to start getting people who aren't that hardcore fan who has the season pass racing every weekend and if you're going to go just like see on YouTube and you're like, oh, I'm going to go watch this and tune in, there needs to be that higher level of intrigue and excitement um, that comes with very challenging obstacles that are really going to push these pros on, can they make it through and have that excitement that builds from that? And that's where you need to start building is that listen, the people who are watching already are the fans who already are racing every weekend. How can we get the people who are just the How casual much? athletics fan and go and go from there? So well, there you go. There's my two cents and their two cents. We also talked a little bit more uh, about some other stuff going on in the sport. As I said, the full podcast will be up soon. Remember, we've got a great discount for you, ORM 2023. That's good for 30% off any Spartan or any Tough Mudder. Let me know in the comments what do you think 
about this barbed wire controversy. Love you, miss you, mean it. I've got to run.